Hi crypto friends and welcome to our Dex Tools Academy YouTube channel. Tokenomics, a very important topic to understand when investing in crypto can represent a significant part of the success of a crypto project. But what exactly does that term mean? What effect do tokenomics, governance and DAOs have? All these questions will be answered in this video today, but before I go into details, it is important to note that everything in this video is for educational purpose only and not a financial advice. I can't give you financial advice because I'm not your personal financial advisor. Let's start first with a basic introduction of what tokenomics is before we go into the details later on. Tokenomics, a combination of token and economy, is a general term for the factors that make a particular cryptocurrency valuable and attractive to investors. This includes everything from the supply of a token and how it's issued to its utility. Tokenomics is an important concept to keep in mind when making an investment decision because a project with smart, well-designed incentives to buy and hold tokens for the long term is more likely to survive and perform better than a project that has not built an ecosystem around it. A well-built platform often leads to higher demand over time as new investors flock to the project, driving prices higher. Similarly, when launching a project, um, founding members and developers need to carefully consider the tokenomics of their native cryptocurrency in order for the project to attract investment and succeed. Now that you know the basic definition or explanation of tokenomics, let's move on to its main features. The first point to remember is that the structure of a cryptocurrency's economy determines the incentives that encourage investors to purchase and hold a specific coin or token. Each cryptocurrency has its own monetary policy, just like each fiat currency. Tokenomic determines two aspects of a crypto economy. The incentives that govern how the token is distributed and the utility of the tokens which influences their demand. Also, supply and demand have a huge impact on the price and projects that have the right incentives can skyrocket in value. So let's take a closer look at the main variables that developers change to affect the tokenomics. And the first variable is the market cap. The market capitalization of a token is the total amount invested in the crypto project so far, similar to the market capitalization of a stock. Fully diluted market capitalization, which is the theoretical market capitalization if the maximum supply of the token were already in circulation, is another important metric. This provides investors with a rough estimate of the total value of the token. The higher the market capitalization of a token and the lower its circulating supply, the more valuable it can become in the future. After market cap comes mining and staking. Mining is the main incentive for a decentralized network of computers to validate transactions on base layer blockchains like Ethereum 1.0 and Bitcoin. New tokens are awarded to those who use their computing power to discover new blocks, fill them with data and add them to the blockchain. Staking rewards those uh, who perform a similar function but store a number of coins in a smart contract. And that's how blockchains like Avalanche, Tezos or Binance Smart Chain work. And it's the model that Ethereum is moving towards with this update 2.0. Then comes yields. In order to encourage people to buy and stake tokens, decentralized finance platforms offer high returns. The tokens are deposited into liquidity pools, which then power decentralized exchanges and lending platforms with these massive pools of cryptocurrencies. These returns are distributed in the form of new tokens. After that, there is a token burn mechanism. Tokens are burned on some blockchains or protocols. This means that they will be permanently removed from circulation to reduce the supply of coins in circulation. Uh, reducing the supply of a token should help support its price as the remaining tokens in circulation become scarcer according to the laws of supply and demand. Instead of sending transaction fees to miners, Ethereum also started burning a portion of the submitted tokens as transaction fees in August 2021. On the website watchtheburn.com you can see how many tokens are currently being burned and to this day more than 2.4 million Ethereum has been burned. Dextools announced its monthly burn mechanism in November 2021 and burns a safe significant amount of DEX tokens every month. You can see the actual amount of DEX tokens being burned in the top right corner of the DEX tools app. 
Then there are the token allocations and acquisition periods. Like some cryptocurrency projects, they track the distribution of tokens in great detail. Often a certain number of tokens are reserved for venture capitalists or developers, but they can only sell them after a certain amount of time has elapsed, which is called the vesting period. This of course has an effect in the circulating supply of the coin over time. Ideally, a project uh, team should have implemented a system for distributing tokens in such a way that the impact on the circulating supply and the price of a token is as small as possible. After this, another major factor affecting tokenomics is limited versus unlimited supply. Tokenomics determines the maximum supply of a token. As you may know, Bitcoin's tokenomics, for example, dictates that only 21 million coins can be mined, with the last coin expected to enter in circulation around the year 2140. Ethereum, on the other hand, does not have a hard cap, although its issuance is capped each year. Some NFT projects take scarcity to the extreme, like minting just one NFT for a piece of art. And finally on the list comes liquidity pools. In a nutshell, a liquidity pair allows crypto traders and investors to gain access to market liquidity in DeFi markets. Liquidity pools in particular are a collection of funds placed in a smart contract to provide liquidity for decentralized exchanges, lending and lending protocols and other DeFi applications. A liquidity pair can be thought of as a decentralized version of an order book or a matching engine powered by smart contracts. And liquidity providers deposit two coins in um, equal proportion to trading pools like Uniswap and SushiSwap, which use a constant market making algorithm, ETH and USDC, for example. LPs can earn protocol tokens as an incentive to contribute liquidity to the trading platform by staking so-called liquidity provider tokens or LP tokens in addition to receiving a share of pool trading fees. But who really decides tokenomics and how? All these decisions are made at the protocol level and most tokenomics are built into the computer code of a cryptocurrency by its creators. Before a cryptocurrency is launched, its tokenomics is usually outlined in a white paper, which is a detailed document that explains what the proposed cryptocurrency will do and how it and any underlying technology will work. And now the list we've discussed above lays the groundwork for tokenomics, but it's just the beginning. Cryptocurrencies are essentially a free pass for creators to use whatever kind of game theory they want. Many tokens are so-called utility tokens, which have a specific function within a given ecosystem. For example, DEX coins are used in a decentralized custody system, and they serve to gain access to the DEXtools.io platform or access the private groups of DEXforce Ventures to obtain additional benefits such as pre-sales of new projects for the holders. The DeFi++ token created by PaiDAO is used to power a decentralized index fund for major DeFi tokens, and so on. Additionally, token holders have been able to vote on the rules that define the economics of a cryptocurrency by voting with uh, tokens through decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs for the past several years. A DAO could vote to increase the number of tokens issued to participants who pledge tokens to validate transactions, for example. For example, Olympus DAO operated a decentralized money market fund where those who wanted to create a stable reserve currency benefited from additional funds joining the pool. The most rational option according to the project's game theoretic model was to bet home on the protocol's self-composing protocol. Tokenomics does not always work as expected. After investors using an OM liquidity pool on a third-party platform were liquidated, a large number of people ultimately sold OM. As a result, the price of the token plummeted, scaring away other investors. And now, finally, at the end of the video, let's talk about token governance and decentralized coordination. Governance, we must say, plays an important role in tokenomics these days. Many tokens serve as governance tokens, meaning holders have voting rights to influence future rules and decisions of a project. Instead of decisions being made by a centralized group of developers, token holders can vote on how the platform should run. Think of governance tokens as shares in a publicly traded company without a CEO. DeFi platforms are powered by decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, which is the name given to a governance system based on the governance of tokens. Holders have the ability to vote on anything. 
ApeCoin DAO, for example, is debating whether or not to implement ApeCoin on the Avalanche chain. Tokenomics is essential for the success of a project. Just as a reckless CEO can destroy a company, poor governance decisions can destroy top DeFi projects. If all else fails, they can hard fork a cryptocurrency, which they are doing in an attempt to save the Terra Luna ecosystem, whose house of cards has recently collapsed. Luna and the UST coin that was meant to be stable dropped to zero in a short time. Hard forking is a process of copying the base code on a of a blockchain, making some non-backward compatible changes and migrating old cryptocurrencies and validators to the new network to force a new tokenomic schedule into existence. So that's the end of our video, but still, if you have any questions about anything related to tokenomics, please mention that below in the comment box and also let us know if you'd like us to make a video on any particular topic. Now, if you found the content useful, don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell button and all so that you don't miss out on weekly content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next Dex Tools Academy video. Bye!